John Drew would blow his top. That's one thing Mary Broadbent knew for certain. He might be mad enough to fire her, or even worse, dump her. But her boss, her lover, was way up in the always winter peaks, and knowing how long it generally took Sheriff John T. Drew and Billy to get everything protected from the snow already falling, he wouldn't be able to get to Basin Creek in an hour. And that's if Johnny hadn't been lying to her about being twenty minutes away. Besides, twenty minutes would be too late for the busted stirrup, and Mary's landlady owned that bar. What choice do I have? She was surprised to hear her own voice. It sounded like that time she had gone into that cave on a grade school field trip to Lewis and Clark Cavern State Park near Whitehall, when Monty Jefferson had dared her to yell, Charlie Parker is a big dummy, in one of the limestone chambers. The echoes scared the dickens out of everyone, especially their elderly teacher. Mary wasn't cleared by her doctors yet to do much of anything. She still needed the walking cane, but at least she had graduated from wheelchairs and walkers. Buckling on the belt that carried the Glock Model 17 took longer than she anticipated, but her vision was clear and she didn't feel dizzy or show signs of another tear-inducing headache. The bulletproof vest went on easily, and she stepped out into the hallway. So far, so good. Once she made it to the staircase, Mary felt better, but kept one hand on her cane and the other on the guardrail as she made her way down to the ground floor. It wasn't like she was coming down the Empire State Building. County offices in the Cutthroat County Courthouse slash Basin Creek Municipal Building were on the second story. She did not run into the clerk, James Older, who was entering the old building as Mary was walking toward the front door.